Hi, everybody. I'm Tawanda Coleman. When a child is removed from their home because of abuse or neglect, they enter foster care. The court sends them into a new home, often a new school, new everything. It's a tough time for these kids who basically have no voice. That's why the court-appointed special advocate or CASA volunteer is so important. They step in to be the child's voice. Today, we'll learn more about CASA and how you can volunteer to help change a child's story. The Plus Side of Nashville starts now. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Plus Side of Nashville. Thank you for joining us for the, this edition of the Plus Side of Nashville. You know, there are too many children in our foster system. No child should grow up in foster care. Every child deserves to be in a loving home. CASA, or Court Appointed Special Advocate, is a program made up of volunteers who are the voice in the courtroom for abused and neglected children who cannot speak for themselves. Juliana Huddle is the Executive Director of CASA Nashville. In, uh, we're so excited to have you here today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. What a great program. And, and for those people who, uh, you know, sometimes you hear the word CASA thrown around, but you don't necessarily know what that means and what that entails. What exactly does a CASA volunteer do and what is CASA? Yeah, well as you've already stated, CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. So our volunteer advocates go through an intensive 36-hour training and at the conclusion of that training are then sworn in by our juvenile court judge and then assigned to a case where there may be a child or sibling group um, that needs advocacy and our volunteer advocates don't investigate the allegations of abuse, they investigate everything else that's going on in that child's life. So anything and everything that child may need, our volunteers report directly back to the judge so that way they can make a more informed decision on what needs to happen with that child. So when we say they, are, they become the voice mm -hmm. of that child, basically they take all the information that they've gathered mm -hmm. about the child, maybe their, their, their environment and what's going on with them, and then they report that to the judge. Correct. So our our volunteer advocates, they go out, first thing they often do is meet with the child um, or the sibling group and, and get to know them as an individual and as a person. Um, they go to their school, they talk to their parents, they talk to other family members, therapists, anybody and everybody that can help paint a picture of what's going on in that young person's life. Um, and you're correct, they, they turn around and then, they, then write it in a court report and give it directly to the judge. Do you have to have any special qualifications? Can just anybody who maybe has a love of helping folks, I would imagine that that is, should be a main priority, but in, are there special requirements to be a CASA volunteer? There are. Um, we fall under the national organization, so um, volunteers have to be at least 21 years old, um, and obviously with volunteers working with children, there is a background check that needs to happen, but all in all, um, I've been with the agency almost a decade, and it never ceases to amaze me the, the quality of people that come through. Um, we've had a retired veterinarian, a stay-at-home mom of four. Um, I mean, any anybody can become a CASA. Um, a lot of folks think a, an attorney or a social worker, but really all walks of life um, come through and, and make a difference in a child's life. Yeah, that's important um, that, that the children get to meet with people who have the varying backgrounds, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. So how then does, if they, they go and they speak on on behalf of uh, the child, what typically happens from that point? Do they step back? Is, 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 does, are things settled that day? How much time does a CASA volunteer typically have to sort of uh, commit yeah. to this? That's a great question. So we tell our cost, potential CASA volunteer advocates that it takes anywhere from 10 to 15 hours a month. It could take more, it could take less. Um, we hang in with the child or with the sibling group until they find permanency. So whether that's going back with mom and dad or aunt and uncle, grandma, grandpa, or unfortunately sometimes some of our children have to move forward in the adoption process. And so we're there with them every step of the way. So, you know, on average, we say uh, uh, the lifespan of a, a case is about two years, um, but it could go less, it could go more, depending on the circumstances and kind of what's going on with that family unit. Talk a little bit about just some of the situations um, that you're dealing with with these, with these children. Um, what is the average length of time does a child typically spend in foster care? 
So before the pandemic, um, we were seeing our cases that we were involved in lasting anywhere from 17 to 18 months. Since the pandemic, we've seen that number grow. Um, as, as we all know, it was a shared experience by everyone, uh, you know, in the world as far as um, the difficulties with the pandemic and that's only further delayed permanency for a lot of our kids so um, not only are we seeing more kids come into foster care but we're also still trying to find permanency for the ones that the pandemic kind of um, slowed their case a bit so the pandemic had an effect on on casa as well as the families that you see it did um, you know we have to re allow our families to um, do their monthly visits and for parents to work the plan that the court sets before them and so it's hard to do that when we have to socially distance and we can't get together to make those meetings and um, that family time happen. CASA really helps save money for the, the wealth versus and we know that there's just not enough caseworkers yeah. to go around. How much would you say that just a CASA volunteer being involved can help as far as financially um, in the welfare system, just cut back with, with how much money is involved. Yeah, um, that's a great point. So on a research study has shown that when a child has a cost of volunteer that they spend 10 less months um, in foster care. So when you think of taxpayer dollars, um, you know, the tens of thousands of dollars that it takes to, um, you know, provide foster placements and, and treatment and um, all the services needed for children. On average, for us, it cost about $1,400 a year to provide a child with an advocate. Um, so there's definitely cost savings there um, on multiple levels when a, a CASA gets involved with a child in foster care. How many CASA volunteers do you currently have and what would be your dream number to oh, have? <laughs> well, currently we have just over 200 CASA volunteer advocates. Um, and anywhere in the last several years in Davidson County, we've seen a right around 500 youth, uh, teens and youth come in to our um, foster care system. So we obviously want to provide every child um, that, that needs a CASA. And I can say in the last couple of years we've seen a need for bilingual CASA volunteers and we also uh, along with every other CASA program in the country have a huge need for male volunteer advocates. So males let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Do you typically try to appoint a CASA volunteer with whatever the child is say for instance if there is a male child do you would you typically try to place them with a male volunteer? Most definitely. We, we take into consideration um, the trauma that the child has been through. Sometimes that may be appropriate, sometimes not. Um, but more often than not, we, we serve a lot of teen, young teen men or young boys. And um, the value of having a male volunteer advocate that can relate to them in a way that you or I can't um, is really powerful. And so that's our hope is that every child that we serve sees a little bit of themselves the advocate that um, that we pair with them. Have you had some real success, uh, success stories when it comes to just the outcome of once the CASA volunteer is involved with the child and when they're going to court with them and so forth as far as, as how that child turns out? Because I know being yeah. in the welfare system, um, being a part of an abused or an ab a neglected family, those children may have some, some, some problems, some things that they ne need to work through, some counseling and so forth. Um, have you seen some real changes made thanks to some CASA volunteers? Most definitely. Um, you know, a lot of our kids often say that um, their CASA is the one constant in their life from start to finish. And a lot of our CASA stay involved in an informal way after the case closes um, because there was a bond created there. Um, and so for a lot of our kids, you know, unfortunately the child welfare system, it's taxing. Having been a, a former caseworker myself, I, I understand the burden that comes with that. And, you 
know, there's turnover in caseworkers. There may be turnover, like, when they change schools or, you know, just the variety of professionals that are in their lives. And um, more often than not, our CASAs hang in there with them every step of the way. And that just, that speaks volumes to our young people. What is typically the relationship, and, I, and I'm sure this varies case by case, between the parent or the family and the CASA volunteer? That's a great question. So a lot of, I think, the misconception around working with our families is that um, our families don't love their children because obviously, you know, they, their, their children are abused and neglected. So that's how they got here. What we see more often than not is that our parents are struggling with substance abuse, mental health, or poverty. Sometimes one of those, a lot of times it's a mix of everything. And our parents parent their children how they've been parented. Mm -hmm. And so we're really getting in the family unit and understanding what's going on. Um, and there's an opportunity for us to address generational trauma. So a lot of times it's us sitting down with the parent and instead of asking what's wrong with you, we ask the question of what's happened to you. And oftentimes our CASA volunteers can be a great support to the families and getting the help that they need. Absolutely, so the CASA volunteers aren't vilifying the family's uh, members because there's often underlying issues that you all totally understand. Most certainly. Well, this is such a wonderful program. We wanna talk more with you. Uh, we're gonna take a break and when we come back, we'll hear from a f familiar face to us here at News Channel 5 who happens to be a dedicated CASA volunteer member. Stay with us.